and I understand that it's the other realm warring. Mm -hmm. um, I, I believe that that's a very real thing. And I've taken steps wherever I can to sort of like uh, uh, put on some armor. And I, I get up every day and I realize I'm not in control of this whole thing. And no matter what happens, I just ask for the grace to be able to deal with it. So, oh, Ashton Ashton Kutcher? Yes. Really? Ashton Kutcher. Oh, rude, 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 rude little boy. He began to try to get more physical in other ways. Um, this culminated in her running away from him and, in her words, him chasing her around a room. Mel Gibson has gained a reputation for being outspoken about some unsettling truths within Hollywood. And this time, it appears he set his sights on the beloved Ashton Kutcher, who recently found himself at the center of a controversy. His number one fear is public humiliation, okay? I don't give a f anymore. Mm. It's evident that he has never been afraid to speak his mind, and that includes not fearing Kutcher either. To that end, the internet seems to be abuzz with speculations that Gibson appears to be prepared to unveil some uncomfortable hidden truths about Ashton as well, suggesting that he might be a handler. We are aware of the pain that has been caused by the character letters that we wrote on behalf of Danny Masterson. There is much more to the news, so let's get started on what Gibson appears to say about Ashton. When you're 20, you don't understand these things. So, uh, you know, I think I just would have, I just would have been more patient. To better understand how Mel Gibson must be feeling about what Kutcher is allegedly doing, it's good to highlight some of the projects that Mel has undertaken as he seemingly tries to tackle abuse in Hollywood and beyond. Mel Gibson was reported to have been involved in the highly controversial movie project Sound of Freedom. Reports suggest that the film has achieved a significant milestone by surpassing the $150 million mark at the box office, and its remarkable success continues unabated. Despite facing opposition from segments of supposedly woke Hollywood, in liberal news media, the movie has not only recouped its production expenses, but has also generated a remarkable tenfold return, solidifying its status as one of the most astonishing triumphs in box office history. If I put down exactly what happened, it's too, it's too hard to take. Mm -hmm. No, there have been a lot of uh, obstacles thrown in the way. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of, uh, what would you call it? He urged people to watch this movie, to deal with an end child to support his vision, Sean Wolfington shared a video of Mel Gibson on Instagram. In it, Gibson stated, one of the most disturbing problems in our world today is <laughs> and particularly the tra of children. Our future is our children. Gibson then encouraged viewers to take the first step in eliminating <laughs> He stated, now the first step in eradicating this crime is awareness. Go see Sound of Freedom. Knowing these facts about Mel Gibson, it is not difficult to see how he would definitely detest anyone trying to cuddle abusers and control victims, both of which are things that Ashton Kutcher has been accused of. Beyond the movie, there are reports suggesting that Gibson is gearing up to release a groundbreaking four-part documentary series that will supposedly unveil the hidden world of global heinous crimes. According to Newsweek, this shocking revelation is expected to expose the industry's staggering annual revenue of $34 billion, an amount that is hard to believe as it surpasses the yearly earnings of the airline industry. And I understand that it's the other realm warring. Mm -hmm. um, I, I believe that that's a very real thing. Mm -hmm. And I've taken steps wherever I can to sort of like uh, uh, put on some armor. Here's Tim Ballantine from Operation Underground, who is reportedly the main character in Gibson's movie. He's a leading figure in the global fight against and spoke about Gibson's involvement in the project. Ukraine got a phone call from Mel Gibson. He actually did the final edit of The Sound of Freedom. That's how we know each other, but not well, not well enough that I'd be getting phone calls. And he told me that he was in Budapest. This movie is apparently the true story of Tim. The story behind this controversial movie reveals that Tim Ballard, who had previously served with the CIA and later joined the newly formed Department of Homeland Security, spent several years targeting consumers of material. However, despite his efforts, he was unable to rescue the children. According to Angel Studios, which holds the licensing rights to this movie, the purpose of the film is to put a spotlight on the global movement to end the by successfully distributing this film to a worldwide audience. However, some fans believe that it was Tim himself who called Mel and requested him to make a movie on what's actually around us and the people. I won't ask you for a direct donation, but can you help me film this? You know, let's film what's happening so we can get people to understand and they can support us. He said, no problem. He helped us get set up and started filming. 
So what was the purpose of making this movie? What did he think? It is seen that Hollywood has been allegedly attempting to cancel this movie, which is truly astonishing. And as the story goes, Gibson thinks that behind this, Ashton is the handler. Ashton Kutcher calls him kind, courteous, and hardworking. He has always treated people with decency, equality, and generosity. The letters did not sway the judge. Well, Gibson's thought might be quite correct, because recently Ashton has been seen doing some weird stuff. Well, the letter not only fell short in its attempt to influence the judges, but also failed to resonate with the general public. This development has led to fresh speculation suggesting that Ashton may be concealing his true identity as a gatekeeper for Hollywood elites. During an interview, this is what Sharon Osbourne said. So, oh, Ashton, Kutcher? Yes. Ashton Kutcher? Yes. Really? Ashton Kutcher. Oh, rude, 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 rude little boy. <laughs> This statement aligns closely with the public's perception of Ashton, as he has intermittently shown support for some of the highly accused celebrities in Hollywood, an action that many say designates him as a handler. I believe that it is my effort to defend their right to pursue happiness and to ensure a society and government. To understand his involvement, let's recall Harvey Weinstein's case. His case illustrates this point as his actions remained undisclosed for years. It was only when the truth finally came to light that people began to comprehend the significant role played by power dynamics and institutional betrayals in perpetuating such behavior. Institutional betrayal sometimes can be. Institutional betrayal very broadly is when an institution doesn't do right by those who are dependent upon it. Despite the allegations against him, Harvey Weinstein continued to lead his production companies, producing blockbuster films and receiving one Oscar after another. To many, Harvey was considered a deity within the industry. However, there were also young, aspiring artists whom Harvey deceived and effectively silenced. This immense power enabled him to continue his predatory behavior for years. He began to try to get more physical in other ways. Um, this culminated in her running away from him and, in her words, him chasing her around a room. Indeed, as per certain sources, prominent figures in the industry were already privy to Harvey's wrongdoing. When Ashton openly supported Danny Masterson, it drew significant attention and raised questions among the public and media alike. Over five years after Danny Masterson's rape allegations surfaced, his former That 70s Show co-star Ashton Kutcher breaks his silence. Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis were among over 50 individuals who penned letters to the judge in the Danny Masterson trial, expressing support for the actor prior to his sentencing, according to court documents. Who sent in a letter defending the character of convicted serial and Scientologist in good standing, Danny Masterson. Kutcher and Coonies, who are married and have two young children together, previously worked alongside Masterson on the Fox sitcom That 70s Show, which aired for eight seasons and consisted of 200 episodes from 1998 to 2006. Additionally, Kutcher and Masterson collaborated on Netflix's The Ranch. However, Masterson was written out of the show during its third season, after facing allegations in 2017. Also tonight, a judge in Los Angeles sentenced actor Danny Masterson to 30 years to life in prison. Before his sentencing, Masterson's victims delivered impactful statements to the court, portraying the 47-year-old as a predator. Following the sentencing, one of Masterson's lawyers maintained his innocence and stated that the legal battle was far from over. The appellate lawyers are confident that these convictions will be overturned, he said. So Mila and Ashton showed their support for the convicted rapist before he received a prison sentence of 30 years to life for s***ing two women at his Hollywood Hills residence two decades ago. And I questioned whether any of the celebrities uh, who may have submitted letters for Danny were perfectly aware that these letters are a matter of public record. In letters submitted to the court before the sentencing, Coonies and Kutcher presented a contrasting image of the disgraced actor, one that sharply contrasted with the ruthless predator described by his victims, who had alleged that he had forcefully subjected the women to the substance use, and he did some really heinous acts on them. The two women he's convicted of gave emotional statements about how the have impacted their lives, despite it being more than 20 years since these crimes occurred. Kutcher in his letter wrote, while I'm aware that the judgment has been cast as guilty on two counts of 
attacked by force, and the victims have a great desire for justice. I hope that my testament to his character is taken into consideration in sentencing. I do not believe he is an ongoing harm to society, and having his daughter raised without a present father would be a tertiary injustice in and of itself. These letters came to light a day after Los Angeles County Superior Court, Judge Charlene Olmedo handed down a sentence to Masterson. Unless successfully appealed, this sentence all but ensures that the actor will not be eligible for parole until he reaches senior citizen status. However, Kutcher faced heavy criticism regarding this incident. One person wrote, wow, astounding. Maybe they didn't know him personally like that, I hope. Lol, otherwise they are a part of it. Another one wrote, how are they supposed to know if it hasn't been confirmed? This was months before him getting convicted. Tell me, if you our friend was getting accused of it, would you believe them until it actually comes out? Now Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis have found themselves in a position that those who followed their Teflon trajectory might never have expected, apologizing. And both the letters and apology video share an uncomfortable tone of supreme self-assurance. We are aware of the pain that has been caused by the character letters that we wrote on behalf of Danny Masterson. Furthermore, Cooney's declares in a tone of grave certitude saying, We support victims. We have done this historically through our work and will continue to do so in the future, while the pair is presenting mitigating information about a friend in order to potentially reduce his sentence, is far from an unprecedented step in the legal system, it does not evoke the sense of supporting victims. Similarly, Kunis's declaration that the letters were not written to question the legitimacy or the validity of the jury's ruling rubs up uncomfortably against both letters repeatedly and aggressively pressing the point of Masterson's opposition to substance use. A couple months ago, Danny's family reached out to us and they asked us to write character letters to represent the person that we knew for 25 years. The video itself is a bizarre document of contemporary fame. Both stars are in just woke up level wrinkled t-shirts with Kutcher unshaven and bedraggled. If the aim was to present us with a frank dose of Ashton and Mila letting us into their world, it missed the mark. The result seems to bear the self-conscious drama of two people who feel compelled to create their own hostage video. So that the judge could take that into full consideration relative to the sentencing. The letters were not written to question the legitimacy of the judicial system or the validity. In light of all these occurrences, Mel Gibson's supposed fears may be valid after all, because it is now clear that Ashton and his wife have been gaslighting the public. Throughout all of their years of success, they have developed a false reputation in order to possibly satisfy their personal desires. That's it for today, folks. Until next time, goodbye.